incentives and so forth. So it was, there were a lot of people who were interested. Hmm. So I'm going to get started. Um, Is that you or Bobby? It's not me, I just Bobby, you Bobby you're ringing. It's your broker. You're broke. He's Somebody not broke. Don't worry. If he's I'm broke, lying. the rest of us are in deep why trouble. Did, why didn't you answer? <laughs> All right. So I pray. Uh, so we're going to get started. Um, and uh, we have just a um, budget adjustment from Dale. So. Mr. is here to brief us on her request. When we get done, I need to talk to you about a different issue about setting up a meeting. Okay. Um, so, Happy New Year, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Um, Monica Hutt, I'm the Commissioner of the Department of Disabilities, Aging, and Independent Living. Um, and with me today, as always, is Bill Kelly, our Chief Financial Officer. Um, and actually, new to this committee is Megan Trin Ward, who is our new Deputy Commissioner. Can we all? George had the audacity to retire at the end of December. Oh, uh, what she was thinking. Uh, and luckily, um, we've had Megan in the department for a very long time with a tremendous amount of expertise and choices for care, and so she's uh, in a great tradition um, and is here for the first time. So, okay, well, since this is budget adjustment, um, you don't need to go through the description of the Right, and you so, are, because this committee is fairly familiar with the department, so. Mm -hmm. So if you want to jump just to the, as always, um, Bill prepares a, a kind of a narrative version of the ups and downs, just because it seems simpler to walk through. So if you want to just jump to the third page of that document in front of you, I could just walk through the numbers and then I'm to you. Um, so that first section, that first, um, the Dale overview, is a summary of everything that I'm going to talk about. Out, and I'll do that by appropriation, but just to give you a kind of a sense of the overall, the total net increase um, in terms of gross numbers for the budget adjustment in Dale is the 6.1, 6131403. All then, funds. I'm sorry, excuse me. All funds. All funds. Mm -hmm. I almost wish you were closer to see if you're nodding or shaking your head. Oh, no, it says so all well here because obviously you've got Medicaid involved. So yeah. is there a general fund? I'm sure there is on a different sheet of paper, but it's not here in terms of general, what it translates to in terms of general funds. Mm -hmm. Just browsing quickly, they're almost all global commitment funds except for the 1.7 money falls to person, which is 100% federal, yeah. just okay. a spending authority adjustment. Okay. All right, so I'll just jump into the, um, and go appropriation by appropriation. And again, this summary document that Bill does matches to the ups and downs if you wanted to, to toggle back and forth. Um, but in terms of the Dale administration appropriation, there are no requests for budget adjustment in that appropriation. Uh, the next one down is the Dale grants, which is specific to our adult services division. Um, and just a couple of, uh, of changes there. The first, that 541947 is um, moving the spending authority for the one-time funds for SASH. You'll recall that that was a three-year commitment that the legislature made last year. This is the first year of that, and it's just moving the spending authority from the agency to Dale. You'll see that for the next three years. Okay, so that was just, just, um, it's AHS neutral. It's it's Exactly, exactly. Um, and then the second item is an adjustment in the attendant services Medicaid program. So you recall there are two different attendant services programs. One is Pure General Fund and one is Medicaid. Um, and this is, once again, just a, an adjustment um, that we're able to do because we continue to see a trend of, of um, underutilization in that attendant services Medicaid program. This isn't all of the underutilization, um, but it is uh, part of a kind of a three-year trend that we've been watching. So we just continue to try to adjust to make sure that we are managing the budget as closely as we can to what we need. Okay, so the 317 gross is um, an adjustment. What, what's the total for um, Medicaid intended services? 1.6 million approximately. Okay, I should say. Uh, so the next appropriation down is the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and there are no uh, adjustments re requested in the budget adjustment this year. Mm -hmm. Over to page four, do 
start with what you have, and again, there are no adjustments to custody in what you have. I think we're... Right. Okay. No, that's the last page here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the next appropriation down is developmental services, and there are a few things in there to talk about. Um, the first is just an adjustment between um, the Department of... To say. The department between the, the shift between the Department of Mental Health and Dale when the legislature appropriate or um, approved a, a rate increase for the designated agencies and the specialized service agencies, we always have to just sort of pull up at the end to make sure that there's a right amount in each department. So that's a net neutral adjustment, just moving dollars from the major to Dale. The next item down is um, a little bit more underutilization in our non-home and community-based services program and developmental services. So the bulk of developmental services is are those HCBS dollars, those home and community-based service dollars. But we have a few programs that are funded with non-HCBS dollars. Um, and we have seen, again, some trending in terms of underutilization in those programs. So those programs include our targeted case management, um, the Bridges program, specialized services, which are services for individuals with developmental disabilities that are approved to be in nursing homes, um, and also family managed respite. The bulk of the underutilization is in those specialized services. So if you have a developmental disability and you are going into the nursing home in the state of Vermont, that has to actually get approved through the, to, through the department, through the division to make sure that people with developmental disabilities are not being inappropriately institutionalized. And so there's a pass on um, approval that has to happen. In addition to the approval to be in a nursing home, we're able to provide specialized services for those individuals with developmental disabilities while they're in a nursing home to, to enhance the experience and make it really tailored to them while they're in a nursing home. And we're just seeing continued underutilization in that arena, um, probably because we work really hard to keep individuals with development disabilities out of nursing homes, um, and because most of that is more um, rehab state than it is long-term care. And so the specialized services just aren't being utilized. And then the next item down, um, as you all know very well, we have a collective bargaining agreement with our independent support workers. Um, and there's some underutilization in the dollars that were allocated for the second year of the collective bargaining. And agreement. why is that? We just estimated wrong. We, we just, have fewer uh, providers. It's a, essentially it's an, <coughs> it's essentially it's a point in time estimate, um, and you do that based on the number of provider, the number of employees, and the hours that you're seeing at that point in time estimate. And it's just a little bit less than what we need. And so we're, again, we're just trying to keep this very close to the to the best in terms of managing the dollars that we actually need. <coughs> the next appropriation down is the traumatic brain injury program. Um, again, um, a little bit of underutilization. We continue to just try to make sure that we're leveling all, all of our appropriations appropriately. Um, and, and I think we've talked about this before, but with long-term needs in that traumatic brain injury program, we shift people into the choices for care program. So we continue to do that pretty actively. And so the TBI program is really specific to that type of need. Um, so we can really manage that. I feel like I'm going very fast. If you no, stop me. Yeah. If anyone has questions, but I don't see that there are. Okay. <laughs> and then the last appropriation is our choices for care appropriation. Um, the first um, is the carry forward from ninth, uh, state fiscal year 19 into 20, as is required legislatively. It's the 1% reserve that if it doesn't get spent even forward into the next year. And it also includes a little bit of money that was over that 1% that we did reinvest, as we are required to do. But that two point, the two zero eight two seven eight one. So this Choices for Care is really up here, uh, embedded in all of this, offset by the savings. Yes, exactly. You're looking puzzled, Bill? Well, no, we are. For example, well, the two zero eight two is the bottom number. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's here, um, but then you've got where you're getting savings from other areas. So this shows six one, and choices yes. for care is six seven. But the six seven is offset by yes, all the down. Yes, yes. Now yes. you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now you'll say okay. All right. <laughs> is he not? Is he not in now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
I have the advantage of being able to see. To see him, I know. Uh -huh. I was thinking if I end up with a neck injury. It would so be these are, I mean, that. these are the numbers that we're already seeing over here. Yes. Yeah. The federal that's, funds. That summary yeah. covers everything. It just gives you a quick, quick <coughs> overview. And then I'm just going through the details. <coughs> Um, the case mix, um, actually we had a um, uh, case mix uh, when mental health was in yesterday, it was on the PNMI piece, the acuity of care. So the same thing is happening in nursing homes. This is basically um, the normal uh, rate review and um, uh, case mix adjustment based on the acuity. Correct. So rate setting does that case rate mix for us. I would assume that with all the emphasis on keeping people at home and in their communities. By the time they go into a nursing home, their acuity level is fairly severe. I think that's absolutely right. Um, I think that that's absolutely right. I think that the people that are in nursing homes are more medically complex. The case rate mix is based on a, a number of different factors. The staffing required for that person, the amount of therapies that they need and are receiving, um, and so that all of those factors go into yeah. the case rate mix. So that's exactly right. Um, questions? Yes. So, um, since it is my budget, um, could you just in an email to me um, um, put this in the context of total appropriations and, and the shifts that are made on total appropriations? And because most of this is dropping caseload for a huge piece of all of this, a total caseload, um, um, how much we were off, and a little background for each in an email. The um, one thing that people always get concerned when they see something going down, are you deliberately doing something to uh, reduce spending? Are yeah. you somehow doing it at the expense of services or case plans? Yeah. Right. And I think yep. that is always the concern that people say, um, as opposed to, no, we're doing everything um, the way it is, you know, a, a currently level, but um, either we've got a few fewer than we estimated or the right. service mixes right. um, if we had, somehow. And, and, and if there was some comment made, why you think we were down or we were off? Yeah, we have, we have some trend, we have obviously trend information on all of that, so we can send you that as well. So yeah, if that would, that would be great. Sure. Then if we get a question about this, it's not that I really have that yes. much concern, but yeah. um, the likelihood, most likely thing is people would ask questions about why is this happening. Right. Absolutely. And what's the numbers? I think I'm really asking more or less the same thing as Senator Westman. Just, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm not clear on how much of this <coughs> is, for example, money that's just not being spent or money that's being spent differently in house. Or is it, you're, you're paying a little less here and more over there. Is this how close is this to a zero sum game? I think it's as close as we can get it. Um, certainly, it's not in those in the areas that I talked about the different programs. It's money that's not being spent in those programs, and and Bill, as you all know, is pretty conservative, so he won't usually put anything like this even up for consideration if he can't see that there's been a pretty consistent trend over time. But for the most part, you're putting it someplace else rather than just giving it back. Is oh, that right? Yeah. Or, yeah, it's helping to fund that overall just, adjustment of over yeah. six million. Right. Yeah. Right. So we are trying. We are definitely working really hard to do that management. Yes. But we're watching the overall choices for care program, which is where you know all of these kind of these particular programs that we're talking about with underutilization, other than developmental services, you know they typically filter to the choices for care program. So we're certainly watching that program closely um, and seeing mm -hmm. very consistent usage there. Um, and absolutely, we have the pressure in the nursing home, and we have to figure out how to. On that to make this as level as we can. Their is, numbers are going down as well, right? The census is pretty consistent or and a lower than it could be, but certainly the acuity level for people that are in their seniors, I think, is getting higher. Um, and that's also a well, the other thing is People need to remember when you're doing these estimates, both caseload on service plans um, as well as on the salaries uh, under the um, uh, bar collective bargaining, bargaining yes. um, is that you were doing this uh, almost 18 months ago. Yeah. Yes. 
And so um, this is right. Which is where the case rate makes us the same idea. It was you know months ago that we made the estimate and then we sort of see yeah. the actual usage. Uh -huh. So that goes both ways for sure. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but what this is doing is obviously there's some significant ups here um, relative to. Um, mm -hmm. Now, on the, um, on the money follows the person, the federal funds, is that because we got more? Can you explain? Uh, 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 I can. That's, I mean, that's nice, mm -hmm. almost $1.8 million there. Right. So we, um, I, again, I know we talked about it before, but we spent time talking with you about ramping down the money follows the person program. So we didn't anticipate having that program in place. In the FY20 budget, it was it was the demonstration grant was ending, uh -huh. um, uh, but the federal government continues to sort of every year, not sort of every year, they say, oh, we have a little bit more money, we can do this program for another year, and and um, so this is uh, them giving us one more year of funding, um, and candidly, and, and I talked about this with with um, house appropriations as well. Candidly, there's always the the, um, the calculation around whether it's worth ramping a program back up for just one more year because the federal government tends to, there's, there, it's a, there's bipartisan support for money follows the person, which is a concentrated targeted program to move people out of nursing homes into lower levels of care. And in Vermont, we used it as well to get people out of hospital settings and into lower levels of care. But the federal government has been, um, their budgeting has been there's been a little bit about people there. Um, and so they have only been able to um, move the program along one year at a time. And the message to us has been if you are not in the mix in those one year at a time, you won't be in the mix if we ever consider funding it as a, as a program indefinitely and fully. And so we continue to sort of stay in the mix, even though it creates a little bit of chaos for us. Um, but that's what you're seeing here is that federal piece of it. I think it's just to your point, 18 months ago when the budget was built, we didn't anticipate needing spending authority mm -hmm. for the grant. Yeah, because at that there was no confirmation that that money would be, we were winding um, it down. Uh, be available. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Other questions? <coughs> oh, my goodness, you're oh. off the hook very easily. Um, one question. A couple of years ago, we talked about programs who thought were up and whatever, and that's a state-funded program. Um, Which one? Uh, um, for people who don't qualify for, for, for Medicaid. Medicaid. Oh, that's the yeah. general funding yeah. service uh -huh, program. The, um, what is the current status of that? Um, so we, uh, I know we did a report in, that we issued last year that really walked through mm -hmm. literally individual by individual as much information mm -hmm. as we could get. It continues to exist. Mm -hmm. It continues to sort of slowly um, attrit, <coughs> to you know, wind itself down. As much as we can, we encourage people to shift off into Medicaid as they become eligible to do so, but we don't require that. Um, we are paying attention to it. We we do look at them annually, but we can't force them to make the shift um, because I think that um, when we talked about it as a group and as a legislature, we didn't want people to have to make that decision if they if they didn't want to do that. And so we, we see slow, gradual wind down of that, um, but it's still in existence. And how many individuals in this point? I think anywhere between 30 and 35 and 40. Yeah. yeah. You'd, have to look, I'd have to look back at Santa. Uh, exactly. It's going down each year. Yeah, because we're As not in leave the program. Yeah. But that's pretty there's much, no that's pretty close to what it was last year. It's there's been there are some people that are eligible to move, but um but <coughs> we went the through that all was last, last year was but that I, we weren't gonna but, make anybody do that. But I think because the we pay the spouse. Um it's because we uh, you can pay the spouse in choices for care, but you can't pay the spouse for instrumental activities of daily That's, living. But that was part of That was certainly part, part of it. Um, and it's a program that doesn't, um, there's some people that don't qualify for Medicaid on that program, mm -hmm. certainly. Right. And mm -hmm. it's valuable. I don't mean to dismiss it at all. It's a very valuable program, but it, you know, we've always struggled with it being, if you had to pick what was core, um, you know, we tend to focus on Medicaid eligibility as core, but it is a good program. Okay. No. But, um, Anytime there's a proposal, uh, you, get, you get into this dichotomy. Well, then you're saying it's not valuable or it doesn't help, and that's not that's uh, 
not quite <coughs> that black and white. Okay, other questions? Otherwise, um, it's Friday afternoon and um, people can. It's not um, snowing like it was. Um, now, get ready to uh, yes. head yeah. home and uh, we will let you get back to Thank your you. office. And Senator, you wanted to talk to I did want to talk friend. to you, yeah, if I could. So we're done. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.